Well, we're one week into the Colorado legislative session this year, and bills addressing affordable housing, child care costs, and health care and energy are already circulating. Meanwhile, Democratic State Representative Steve Lebsock remains under fire as a former legislative aide filed an official complaint against a lawmaker on Tuesday. This is the third official complaint filed against Lebsock, who is also running for Colorado State Treasurer. And as a quick programming note, after this episode of Colorado Inside Out, please tune in to Devil's Advocate with John Caldera while he will be interviewing none other than Representative Steve Lebsock. So if you want to hear both sides, or at least a, his side of the story, you'll be able to hear that later tonight right here on Colorado Public Television. David, the floor is yours. The legislature in the first week, what do you take away from it? Well, here's the worst bill that's been introduced so far. In Colorado, we have a principle called sunset, which is bureaucracies are not guaranteed eternal life. Every bureaucracy within the state government is supposed to go through a sunset process. So it's authorized for, say, a 10-year period, and then at the end of the 10 years, the legislature can can end it, or they can renew it with no changes, or they can renew it with reforms and improvements based on experience. The lottery division, which is part of the Department of Revenue, has a bill for itself to exempt itself from that. So instead of being up for renewal in 2024, it just gets to go on forever. And you can see the PR campaign that's come out about this. There was just some study about how wonderful Great Outdoors Colorado is for the economy, which is, and that, that's the amendment that says our lottery money goes to outdoor stuff, which, which is great. And they're saying, oh, if you don't give us this automatic renewal, the lottery might get abolished. No, that's not going to happen. But they want to get their bureaucracy away from the normal oversight that applies to all the Colorado bureaucracy. There should be no special deal for the lottery division, which has had a number of financial problems and should be continue to be under close legislative supervision. Eric, I'll let you take your pick on whether it's a bill from this first week you want to talk about or uh, Lebsock, but I'll ask this question about that. Is it becoming a big enough issue where Speaker Durant has to do more about resolving it? Because I know she's addressed it as much as she can, but does she need to find resolution before uh, a couple months go down the road? Well, for our sake, I hope not. Uh, <laughs> your question, I forget exactly your wording, but uh, I think on a weekly basis for the next several months, you can just yeah. uh, auto-program the script uh, <laughs> to, to put Steve Le Lebsock in it. Uh, yes, I think the Democrats in the House, Speaker Duran, Casey Becker, the Majority Leader, others would love to bring some resolution to it, but I'm not sure what that resolution is. I, there's a process. I assume it will go through that process. Lebsock is denying all charges and denying all charges preemptively even uh, and uh, you know he's a he's sort of an island to himself around the Capitol right now he's not caucusing with the Democrats he's been removed from his one committee chairmanship I believe Ed said before the show that he was removed entirely from one of his two committees uh, so he's he's really an island uh, more Republicans I believe are reaching out to him uh, hoping for a vote, given that they're the minority in the House, for a vote now and then from him, uh, then the Democrats want anything to do with the guy. So, yes, it needs a resolution. Um, you know, he's entitled to his defense, but when there's that much smoke and that many allegations, I thought it was a telling picture from opening day of the session where you had Representative Faith Winter and I don't remember the names, Holly Terry and um, I believe Cassie Tanner is the third name of, of, the, of the aides and lobbyists who, uh, in addition to Representative Winter, have filed complaints. They were all sitting together on opening day. It was a very strong statement. Ed, I've said it many times, you're a guy on the Hill. What, what is the, the feeling there and how is it going to impact the business of the session? Uh, how it impacts the business of the session is it, it distracts from it in some ways. I mean, you have a lot of people talking about this. And not only that, a lot of people are, are kind of whispering behind the scenes, if if something doesn't happen to Lebsock after this, uh, then a lot of people are going to swallow other accusations that are out there. But if he is expelled, seriously censured, removed from all his committees, you might actually see a flood of other accusations come out for people feeling like, oh, I can, I can risk my career because there is a chance to, to get some justice from this. Now, if that happens, we might be able to just pack all the issues and just throw them aside because that might take up the entire room this year. Um, and hopefully it doesn't um, take up the entire room. Uh, and that's because there's things that are actually going on. For example, um, just 
yesterday, we saw the a Senate committee uh, with bipartisan approval uh, pass a bill to revamp the Colorado Energy Office. This was one of those bills that got killed in the end of last session uh, in a partisan stalemate. There were some changes made to it this year, but the, the theme of the bill is still we're going to an all of the above energy office, not just a renewable focus energy office. And, and, and Senator Ray Scott, a Republican, managed to get that through a committee with three Democrats supporting it as well after making a couple of changes to it. So there is some work going on. The big uh, bill of the session, I, I would argue, Senate Bill 1, this is the bill to, uh, uh, to put $300 million a year toward transportation funding and then ask the voters to approve $3.5 billion in bonds. That's coming up Tuesday for a hearing. Uh, so I think we're going to get a real indication of how much people are willing to compromise, work together, uh, deal with the big issues then. But uh, so far, there's some hope there could be talk this year. Patty, I don't know her official role when it comes to the process, uh, but does Speaker Duran, whether she has an official role or not, have to uh, has to make sure that process is happening rather quickly. We have three formal complaints and a lawmaker who's not backing down and a session that's only five months long. Yeah, it has to work pretty quickly. And now we've got the independent study and the Colorado Democrats are coming up with a plan to make sure there's not sex harassment on the campaign trail. Really, it's common sense. They could move a little faster on this. We all know what you are supposed to do and not supposed to do. And I want to know if Lepsack asked John Caldera to go home with him as he allegedly <laughs> asked Representative Faith Winter. So please fill us in on that when you get a chance. It's ironic well, tune that... In. Yeah, tune, tune in at 830. Okay. I don't want to give that away. Just keep That's watching. The, okay. The <laughs> It'll really help a viewership um, before and after, I'm guessing. The, it's interesting with Lepsack. No one... He's sponsoring a couple bills important ones. One is the ta marijuana pot tax gaffe from last year that they couldn't fix during the special session. He can't get anyone to co-sponsor anything, including that measure. Fortunately, there's another fix out there for that bill because we want to get that one done quickly. And they did already, Governor Hickenlooper's already signed the first bill into law, which is kind of that nurse compact with other states. They managed to hit the January 19th deadline, unlike the federal government.